Hello everyone and welcome to today's product launch webinar on Nuada CFD, a new digital wind tunnel app for Rhino. Uh, I'm uh, Richard Zögeschuller, I'm product manager for AEC at SimScale and today with me is Jerome Janssen. He's uh, associate director at TT Thornton Massetti and he's the main developer of the Rhino app and he'll present later to you uh, what the app can do and how it actually works. Before we actually start with uh, the webinar, I want to rem remind you whenever you have technical issues, please reach out in the chat and we'll try to fix them. Um, also, when you have a question during the webinar, and we assume there will be quite some questions, please make use of the question functionality of the webinar tool. Uh, post your question there and we'll reserve 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of the webinar to answer hopefully all your questions. So without further ado, let's start. So we, before we actually um, talk about the Nuera CFD app, what it can do and how it actually works, uh, we'll quickly introduce both SimScale and Thunder Massetti uh, for the ones uh, from you who haven't heard about us yet. Um, then introducing the Nuera CFD Rhino plugin, and we'll also show a live demo uh, to see how it works. And obviously in the end, it's also important for you to see how you can get access to the app. And we'll end with a short Q&A session to answer all your upcoming questions. So Jeroen, please uh, talk about TT. Yes, thank you, Richard. Um, thank you and welcome all. So at, at Thornton to at DT, um, we're engineers. Um, and with that, I mean uh, quite a bit range, going from structural engineering, facade engineering, um, sustainability, um, and a few other services. <clears throat> a lot of that is focused on buildings, whether they're tall, whether they're complex geometry, uh, moving roofs, stadiums, that sort of thing. Um, and with the team I'm sat in, we call it Core Studio, um, we help the engineers with workflows, with applications, um, with those complex uh, geometries. And this new Ada CFD app is, is one of those workflows that hopefully can help ourselves um, in better deliver the buildings, um, but also yourselves um, and, and help the whole building industry. <clears throat> Great. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Okay, now um, I guess some of you come from directly from Rhino and might not have yet heard about SimScale. So quickly, what is SimScale? Uh, in short, um, SimScale is an online cloud CAE engineering platform, and we strive to empower everyone to innovate faster by making high fidelity engineering simulation technically and economically feasible and also do that at any scale. Um, SimScale in this context is, uh, has a broad range of applications uh, in AEC, so architecture, engineering, construction. You can see here uh, a few example use cases, how SimScale is used uh, with our customers. So on the top left, we see a theater thermal comfort simulation, and on the bottom, we can see an example where we do uh, natural ventilation studies uh, using SimScale. In the top center, we see one of our most common applications, which is pedestrian wind comfort, um, in this example, according to the City of London guidelines. And what we also can do, and what is pretty uh, pretty much demanded uh, nowadays, is data center analysis. So actually analyze the performance of uh, specific data center designs uh, and to ideally uh, reduce the energy consumption by improving uh, the design conditions. Um, we can also use some scale to compute facade pressure co coefficients accurately. This could be then feed back into um, building energy uh, modeling tools for a, for a more accurate estimation of the energy uh, consumption during the year, taking into account natural and mixed ventilation strategies. And also uh, more on the master planning side, uh, we have customers using some scale for um, wind and microclimate uh, studies uh, on a whole master plan or uh, almost city uh, scale. 
But actually, SimScale is much broader than this. Um, SimScale is an actual simulation platform. You can see here at the center the different applications, but at the foundation, SimScale um, consists mainly of in infrastructure and orchestration of uh, HPC computing. Uh, on top of that, we have multiple solvers available that run from structural uh, through thermal analysis and CFD and also coupled simulations. And in between uh, a layer is the SimScale API that connects the actual solvers with the SimScale workbench, which is the classical graphical user interface where typically a SimScale user would set up and run their simulations and post-process also their results. Now, the SimScale API itself can be also used externally, right, for other people to add value in their design process. And one specific use case that we have found to be extremely useful is when simulation experts that are typically um, a bottleneck in the design process, because um, simulations are typically run very late in the design process and then handed over to a simulation expert uh, with very tight deadlines uh, to have the results returned. Uh, and typically these people are um, very much demanded and then it takes some time until the results come back. And at that time, it might be already uh, outdated. Um, the new design iteration might have come up uh, or it's too late to make major design modifications. So we propose a different workflow where the design, uh, the simulation expert can actually create a workflow, create an integration uh, and a solution that can be deployed to architects and designers into the actual design tool and design workflow. Right, so we have the expertise of the simulation expert going into the tool itself and the tool being directly used um, by the architects and designers. So the simulation expert becomes an enabler at scale in the organization. And this, um, yeah, so these use cases enable a couple of different um, scenarios and add values. Um, you can retain in-house knowledge, right, by actually not um, outsourcing uh, simulation um, capabilities. It can be used to connect multiple tools, uh, do co simulation workflows, um, but it can also generate new business models and uh, new value-added services, like one we have as a topic today. Um, but there's also um, a variety of other examples that we have already uh, been deploying and working on with, uh, with our partners. And we can see here a few examples. So on the left, we see um, an integration um, demo with Esri. So we have embedded the SimScale results via the API into a, a, a GIS environment. So we can directly in the, in the GIS tool like ArcGIS Arc, uh, review the simulation results, right? Without going into the simulation tool, we can directly export it and combine it with the GIS uh, georeference data. And on the center, we see an example from an integration we have with NVIDIA Omniverse. So we have an NVIDIA Omniverse connector, uh, which allows users, Omniverse users to export directly the scenes from Omniverse seamlessly to SimScale, run their analysis on SimScale, but also get the results back into Omniverse and do a lot of yeah, advanced stuff with it. Uh, for example, um, the most obvious case being rendering high quality uh, animations of the results, but also again, combining results with different other result sources to, to add new um, data and new evaluation uh, techniques. And finally, on the right side, we see a more traditional example that is um, currently, I guess, state of the art in, in many AC companies uh, using Rhino together with Grasshopper to generate workflows, uh, automate workflows. And we can also integrate in such an environment uh, via the SimScale API. We see here a, a simple example workflow where we read the SimScale data uh, to construct um, outdoor thermal comfort results within Grasshopper. So these are three example use cases that have been implemented already with SimScale and now today we come to a, to a very new one um, which is uh, Nuada CFD which is a an app integrated in Rhino that is delivered uh, to everyone um, 
that has access to Rhino uh, to now use um, SimScale or simulation powered by SimScale directly within Rhino. And with that, I'm handing over to Jerome. All right, thank you. Yeah, let's get into it. Um, so yeah, as, as Richard was saying, the, the new Ada CFD app, it, it, it really heavily leans on that API capability. So um, you can launch it from Rhino, um, very easily set it up, run the simulation in the cloud without even having to, uh, which, so it runs on the SimScale platform but you don't have to as a user interface with um, uh, with the web platform, the typical web platform. And then once the simulation is run, you can actually visualize it back uh, into Rhino again. I think we have a few bullet points on the next slide, right? So yeah, as I said, it's, it's fully integrated within Rhino. Uh, so it's an app as you would notice uh, any other app uh, if, you've, if you've been familiar with them in Rhino. It's powered by SimScale, by the, uh, specifically by the Lattice Boltzmann methods, uh, by the PaceFish solver, and um, geared towards pedestrian wind comfort, so multi-directional, so you can choose 8, 12, 16, 36 directions, run them all at once, or you look at single direction wind studies, and then it's maybe more about um, getting pressures on the facade, uh, getting forces and moments, that sort of type of thing. We're thinking about this as a, as a new pay-as-you-go licensing model, but Richard will talk about that uh, more in, in detail. Um, so we're yeah, taking care of the GPU uh, hours running for the simulation. <clears throat> and what we think Nuada would be very well um, yeah, themed for is these early stage pedestrian wind comfort studies. Um, so getting them in early, simulate early, and then also um, up until like planning approval. So you can choose your uh, resolution relatively easy. So you can also run uh, the high fidelity um, studies that are necessary for actual uh, planning approval. Um, looking at building aerodynamics, uh, looking at wind studies uh, on the ground level, but also on rooftop terraces, uh, balconies around the building and understanding like what does the wind do? What is the effect of the of those buildings, of those corners, et cetera. Um, and then with that, wind mitigation. So if things are actually not going as planned, how can we maybe optimize and, and run multiple options, um, including looking at trees and vegetation, but of course also windscreens and, and other modifications of the geometry. That's where that connection with Rhino, I think, comes in quite nicely. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so. Uh, we wanted to show you a little bit uh, on the live demo where we're at at the moment with, with the app. Uh, so in the next few minutes, uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the, <clears throat> I'll show you through an example um, of setting up the case, but also visualizing. So let's go to the next one. So it all lives in Rhino. So if you're familiar with Rhino, you can just launch the command Nuada CFD and that brings up uh, the little window asks you to continue the first time it asks you to connect with an api key and then it really has two modes setting up new cases that's what we're looking at here so you can click on the plus sign at the top uh, add some information about your project your name your project number internally we use our project number for you know the billing processes of the of the projects um, a little description if you like and then the location of where where we're actually at Press create project, and then that's the moment when we connect to Rhino. So we actually load in the geometry. It's all sorted by layers. So what I'm highlighting here is just highlighting what are we looking at? So the Gherkin is actually the building in the middle, the building of interest. We got a bunch of context buildings. So all of them are quite neatly sorted on layers, including a separate layer for comfort roof terraces. And then you can one by one by category you click them on. So all of these categories mean something different for the CFD. So you got your building of interest, your context, in this case, the ground surfaces, the dark gray and the light gray around. If you wish, you have vegetation, um, etc. Next, and then you go through a few little screens to set up your case. So in this case, a low resolution case, pressing wind comfort. This is an important one where you set and your directions and your wind standards and climate data. So there's a button to load 
the climate data. So I got quite a few uh, prepared files in, in my folders here. If you are, are not, there's a little button on there that brings you to, it's the Ladybug uh, EPW map. So you can actually download all of these wind files. Next one up is setting the terrain condition. So this is around and what, what's the oncoming wind and on the oncoming ground conditions, which is quite important for setting the accurate inlet. Detect, uh, defining which areas we want comfort values on. So with the SIM scale, you got to set the comfort values and the results in advance. So in this case, ground and roof terraces. The next screen up is vertical planes and, and horizontal planes. So you want some planes through the domain. And then that's it. At the end, you get a little summary. And we're actually just ready to go. Um, so this just quickly lists out what whatever you had set. If you're happy with it, you can start the simulation. And at this moment, it's packaging up the geometry, preparing the case, and uploading it to SimScale in the background. So it's creating this, the case on SimScale. <clears throat> Uh, so that's why it, it takes a few seconds here. So we're looking at it in, uh, in real time, let's say. So this is not sped up. And basically, as I said, what it's doing now on the platform. It's building the case. Uh, if you're familiar with SimScale, yeah, you know that setting of the of the pedestrian project in this way and then in a few seconds it will come back with an estimate uh, this run will probably take uh, this much of time from the top of my head i think this is around 45 minutes um, and it will cost i think it's around four or five gpu hours to actually run this um, and in a way that's it um, so you see that project progress bar continues um, you'll get the prompt yeah exactly 43 minutes three gpu hour so until this point, you're not charged yet. But at the moment, if you're saying now, OK, proceed simulation, that's actually when the simulation physically starts on the platform. You're done in this part in the app. So you can close this window. You can go back to uh, the big button in the top, the project page, and you're good to go. And then 45 minutes later or so, you can actually pick up the results. Another quick example I wanted to show you is um, not pedestrian comfort, but actually you can also do single directions or at least choose a few. Uh, so we're looking at a, a very typical cylindrical tower, uh, triangular tower. I think this was a competition scheme that we did a, a while ago. As you see, not very refined, so early stage. You click the plus for a new project. Um, again, fill in some details of, of what, what's the project about. Um, I can't even remember where we were looking at, at, at that tower for, so I've just put some random name in there. Um, in this case, we only have one building of interest, so that's pretty um, basic. And then if we continue here, we don't choose pedestrian comfort, but we choose individual directional studies. And you get this little window, so we can select a few directions as you wish. Um, and again, we set them up. Um, as as we've seen a few seconds ago. The only difference now is you won't have any comfort plots to determine, but you can set forces and moments. So this is your, if you're a structural engineer, you're familiar with that, your base shears and your base moments. And um, if you wish on the next screen, um, surface results. So this is a surface um, results of pressures, velocity, and with that, um, yeah, structural loading basically on the building. Um, again, vertical planes ac along the wind or horizontal if you wish, um, if you like them. And then it's finish and review. Again, that's setting up the case uh, done basically. If you're happy with that, you start the simulation, same process. It packages the, the simulation uh, locally, pushes it up to sim scale and, and you go along. The other mode I want to show you, so that's coming up next, is um, visualizing the cases back into Rhino. So once your simulation is done, um, you can click on um, back to the project page. So the, the button at the middle top, that's basically kind of a home button. And you get presented with um, 
in this case, I opened a new model, so the app uh, refreshes. So you get presented with your projects, and all of them are clickable. So you can actually, that's a project tile, you could go into the project that, that matches with your projects on SimScale. And you can, in this case, we have a pedestrian comfort run done. There's a whole bunch of results, and we'll, in the next version, we'll sort them nicely. The one at the bottom is your statistical surface solution. So that is the pedestrian comfort results. So there's three buttons on the right. So the first one, you need to download it locally, and then you can visualize. Now you see nothing in the in the right of viewport, but that's because uh, you got to zoom extends. You got to go to the geometry. In wireframe, it's a white mesh like that, but if you go to shaded, you actually see the false color um, meshes. So this is pedestrian comfort at ground level and a few roof terraces. And as you see, I just ticked on the solid two input volumes on the app, which is then also the building geometry. But you could, of course, also choose to overlay it with your own models and choose your own graphic styles and, and all that sort of stuff, rendered materials and whatnot. And by default, you're getting uh, all of the comfort criteria that are available. Uh, and you can actually just flick through them and, and look at them. Uh, so you see all of the color. But in essence, they're all the same, right? They're all talking about a certain percentage of time and whether that's a, uh, comfortable for seating, standing, walking, etc. cetera. Um, oh, there's, there's more documentation on that, of course, but uh, we'll skip over that today. And alternatively, you can then also look at an individual direction out of those, in this case, 16 directions. Uh, so here we have a vertical uh, plane through the domain along the wind. Um, but And then if we turn again the solid two geometry on, that's the buildings, you can actually see the whole geometry of the gherkin with a vertical slice, in this case, wind velocity going through. Um, and as you see, it's 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 quite a big domain, which is which is good. Uh, you want that for the accurate resolution, accurate simulations, and you can easily flip between velocity and pressure right there. <clears throat> and then um, the other one is the is the tower. I think that's a bit shorter to to visualize, but the only difference really is instead of the top. Uh, choice, you, it says here, run pedestrian comfort, you would then actually have the individual directions, the zero, and what did we click on, the 90 degrees, um, and visualize that. But I think we cut the recording a little bit short, so we'll, uh, we'll have to get back to you on that. Uh, but yeah, you see, so you go to run 60, 60 direction and then load the average results, which is then Again, the vertical plane with the um, with actual surface pressures on the tower, and that's yeah, very much a whistle stop tour, uh, a real cross section through the app uh, where we're at. We're launching it today. Uh, we're very happy for you to to test it. Um, please bear in mind it's still very much on the development. So at the same time, we're also very much valuing feedback and suggestions if you think this features missing, then uh, by all means, reach out and we, we can work through that. Um, I think on the next slide, we have a few examples of how, um, because you might ask, okay, what does it cost and how much, how long does it take, let's say, right? So the great thing with SimScale uh, and uh, specifically the Basefish Solver is it's incredibly gentle on the geometry. So um, most of the times you don't have to clean up much of the geometry. It runs on GPU uh, instances, so actually it runs lightning fast. So here are, for instance, three examples that we've done with the app. Uh, on the left hand side is that um, London center of London, uh, 16 wind direction uh, and a course resolution pedestrian comfort study. So all of the 16 directions altogether took about 42, 43 minutes and in total 4.4 GPU hour. So that would be uh, roughly speaking, what is that, 110, 120 euros, something like that. Um, the middle one is the is the single tower. So that's uh, um, two runs, um, medium resolution, looking at facade pressures. Again, that took a similar time, like around 44 minutes. Uh, and in this case, it's one and a half GPU in total, so 0.75 for each direction. 
And the right hand side is another pedestrian conference, so that's a competition phase. Uh, so a bit more simplified geometry than the, than the one on the left, which took 19, 19 minutes and 1.4 GPU hour. So that gives you a little bit of a, of a range. But then again, as well, if you go up to uh, higher fidelity, higher resolution, um, I've been running cases, let's say, that are much more detailed. And then you're looking at maybe uh, eight or even for the high resolution, 20 GPU hours, let's say, but still maybe two or three hours only, let's say. So it's pretty fast, which is, which is quite nice. And then you can pull the results back in Rhino, which I think we all like as well. Anyway, I think that's me. Um, Richard, I think we're going back to you. Yes, nice. Great presentation, uh, Sharon. So it's really nice to see how, how smooth the workflow is in Rhino and yeah, how integrated it is, right? So as a user, you just stay in Rhino, do all your work there do the post-processing, visualize, take screenshots as you would always do um, and not need to change any of your existing workflow that you already do for the design and maybe for, I don't know, uh, lighting, solar, shading analysis uh, and the like. Um, yeah, so next topic uh, is basically, okay, now after we have seen the app, now how do we get access to it? Um, so let's have a look on that. Um, it's basically a simple step. We made uh, a landing page uh, where you can go to and sign up. And let's see how this looks like. So uh, we shared it later with you, uh, simscale.com slash product slash integrations, nuada minus CFD. And there you basically um, just have to um, type in your email address that you want to sign up with. Um, you agree uh, to the GDPR compliant uh, settings and then click on get access. Um, if you don't have an existing SimScale account, you basically first need to sign up with SimScale to have a basic SimScale account. You type in your name uh, and all the details here, agree to the terms and condition and create an account. After the account is active, you can basically log into SimScale. So you have an active account uh, the next thing would be after uh, your account is there to get an API key. Uh, on SimScale, that's pretty easy. Meanwhile, so you go to manage account and then there's an item called API keys. You add a description uh, for a specific key you want to generate. For example, new CFD test, generate the key. And it's important to note that this is the only time you'll ever get the full key, right? So uh, once you miss the opportunity to copy the key here with the, with the small copy button, it's gone, right? It's not a problem, you can generate a new one, but here you copy the key to a clipboard and, and have your API key, right? At any time you can go back here and disable or delete the key again, right? It might have been, I don't know, seen in a webinar maybe, so you want to delete it later. Um, and then you basically open Rhino and now you install the app. The app is available in the package manager. So you type uh, Nuara, find the Nuara CFD app. Um, ensure it's the actual one that is developed by Jerome uh, from TT. Let's see again. And then you install it. Installation is slightly fast, takes a couple of seconds. And then please restart Rhino for all the changes to take effect. After you restarted Rhino, you can, as shown, start Nuada in the command and you should see the actual UI that we have seen uh, just now with Jerome. And on your first start, you get this little screen here on the right where you have to basically copy back in the API key that you have just generated. So we'll do so and configure the, the settings. And once that is done, you basically are presented in case you already have some uh, with your existing projects. <clears throat> and you also have the ability now to generate a new project and follow, follow the steps that we have just seen from Jerome, how to actually set up the project. 
and that's it, right? Um, so I said, right, the three simple steps. You go to the page, um, request access to the app, um, sign up, then you download and install the app, uh, create your API key, use it, and off you go. Um, for the sign up, you'll you'll get uh, five GPU hours um, to start with, so you can get started. Uh, you'll be contacted as well by one of our team members to basically hand in your your billing information, because as we see uh, in the next slide, the app is not entirely for free, unfortunately, <laughs> because we also have to basically pay mainly for the GPU hour usage uh, in the cloud. We're not running on our own cloud infrastructure, of course. Um, but you get already uh, get started, and then um, basically we see how the licensing works in the next slide. Just note that it might take up to 24 hours for us to actually activate your account and give you the right permissions so you can actually run the app. And now the pricing. So basically, <clears throat> you can start from uh, the base package, which is 500 euros. With this 500 euros, uh, you get 20 GPU hours. Uh, plus the initial five for free. So that makes uh, 25 euro per GPU hour for any additional um, GPU hour you would uh, need uh, for additional use. Um, if you already know that you'll use more than a couple, you can um, save some money and buy a package. So that reduces the price per GPU hour, right? For a 100 GPU hour package, you'll pay 20 euro per GPU hour and for a 200 euro package, uh, you'll get it uh, for 15 euros per GPU hour. So that's the pricing. Um, so the startup pack is a one-time fee of 500 euro to get started with the app, right? to get everything set up and use it. You have some uh, GPU hours already with that. You can, again, uh, add additional GPU hours on top by reaching out uh, to our team um, to get more GPU hours in a package or if you have set it up with uh, your account manager that way, you can also just stay with the pay-per-use uh, account and we'll bill you um, at the end of each quarter uh, with the actual use that you will you will had in, in the last three months. So, okay, that's it for the content we had planned and I already see that there is a number of questions from you guys and maybe we can tackle them one by one and please um yeah if you have any additional questions right we have some more time now to to please type them in and ask us i uh, will try to uh, answer every every follow-up question um yeah so the first one jerome if you see anyone that you want to take please feel free No, if you want to, um, if, if you see yeah. one, if you can start, then uh, let me know. Yeah, there's there's one question, like if I already have an API key from Simscale, can I just use that? Um, so two things. First, it depends on the actual um, permissions uh, and functionality you have enabled for your account. Every user on Simscale can generate an API key. Uh, for the basic uh, user that is a, a free community user, this API, key can be used uh, together with our SOLIDWORKS uh, app, right? So this enables a user to upload directly um, a geometry from within the Solid SOLIDWORKS plugin um, to a new or an existing project. This API key will, however, not work to run um, a pedestrian comfort study with the app. For this, you'll need additional permissions to actually uh, execute simulations with the API key. Uh, and to be able to run uh, the simulations with the Pacefish solver. And if you are already an existing customer that has already access to WinComfort and PwC, then the best would be if you just directly reach out to your account manager and then we'll arrange it so that you also get access to the app. Um, another question. Is your tool able to handle complex designs like Sports Stadia? Yes, that's the short answer. 
Um, yeah, so um, it's basically picking up uh, the geometry in Rhino, right? So in essence, whichever you can model in Rhino, um, you can upload, right? So based on the layer settings, as I showed in the, in the little demo, uh, it picks that up. Now, there's always nuances there, right? Like um, the more complex it becomes, typically with CFD, the more finer the mesh resolution needs to be, et cetera, et cetera, to get good results. Um, so of course there's caveats, but in general, I gotta say, um, I've been using it for very complex models and I would say 95% of them run. Um, it's, it's pretty robust. And then specifically looking, thinking about uh, stadium roofs and so, so you could then put the stadium roof in itself in a separate layer and actually get the, uh, the pressure distributions uh, out of that, let's say. So not just looking at pedestrian comfort, but also a structural loading. I got to say there, because one question I got as well uh, from a colleague uh, is saying, can I verify um, wind tunnel results with the app? I would be always a little bit cautious on that, let's say. So in terms of structural loading, I would more use this as a mean uh, pressure loads and more like early stage uh, options, let's say, like which option is better. I mean, in the background, together with SimScale, we are working on, on improving the actual solver, right, and the inlet conditions. And I don't want to go too technical on that part. Uh, but uh, our, our hopes and goal with that is that we can actually, in a few months' time, do some also some very detailed structural loading or even facade uh, minimum and maximum peak pressures, which actually match wind tunnel tests, let's say. So we'll get there. Um, but I would say early stage and mean pressures, yes, definitely. And complex geometry, yes, definitely. Thanks. There's one question, how are the results validated on accuracy? Um, so maybe let's see it from the SimScale side. So the underlying solver that we're using for the app and also for the pedestrian wind comfort and the, the outdoor wind studies on SimScale is the uh, Lattice Bosman solver Pacefish. Um, we have extensive validation suites uh, on Pacefish uh, development team side as well as on our side. Um, some of them are also published on our website. So you can go to simscale.com slash docs slash validation, I think. And there you'll find all the validation cases that we have run. These are standard industry validation case, cases such as uh, AIJ cases uh, that focus on the pedestrian level wind. We also have cases that focus on um, the facade uh, pressure, uh, the load on the structure like the car case. Um, all of them though are either uh, related to the pedestrian wind that is influenced by the mean uh, and the variance of the wind speed or when it's about the loading on the mean uh, forces right so as Jerome said if you're looking at uh, the peak forces or RMS square values um, that's something we're working on um, or if you have the actual roughness um, elements that you would also typically use in a wind tunnel then you would also get accurate results with the solver itself, right? So that the, the missing link lies in the uh, turbulence generator at the inlet, which we are working on. There is another question on support. If the app also, if the app use also provides the SimScale support. Um, so the app itself um, does not enable the usual SimScale support, right? Uh, SimScale customers might be used to the, the small chat icon that you have on, on SimScale where you can just um, ask a question whenever you're, you're, you're stuck in your simulation or you don't understand the results or don't know how to model something. Um, and you can share the project directly with our support uh, staff. Uh, the app doesn't uh, work in this mode. Um, for the app itself, there is a, a support via the SimScale forum. If you, if you open the app, you will see a small uh, question mark on the top right. And if you press that, you'll get redirected to the SimScale forum to the specific section about the Rhino app. And there you can ask your questions and then Jerome and the team will answer you there. 
Yeah, exactly. There's actually two buttons at the top right. One is directing to the uh, for feedback and, and comments questions to the forum. Uh, so anyone with a SimScale account can post there and, and we'll, we'll have a look at that. The other button is going to the app specific. Uh, so we got a Gitbook documentation, um, which will guide you through. I got to admit, we've been pushing a lot of little updates last week, so that it might be a little bit outdated, um, but we'll, we'll work that up in the next few days. But basically that does the whole uh, app specific walkthrough of setting up a case and um, what I'm also thinking is actually uploading there that Rhino model that I showed now, the, the London model, so that everyone actually can just try a, a run that know that works with certain settings. Um, so we'll get that done in the next few days as well. So I hope that helps for, for support. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. Um... Then there's a question, do you offer consulting on the wind results, like discussion, discussing about mitigation strategies and so forth? It's maybe for you, Sharon. Um, well, that's actually something that we've been discussing quite a bit, actually, right? Um, I guess the honest short answer is we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's um, yeah. Please reach out if so, and then we'll uh, we'll have a chat how we how we do that. Let's say um, yeah. As I said, honest answer. It's all new to us as well. We'd love to. We'd love to hear from you and and yeah, work on these things with you. Um, so I would say yeah, reach out and we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, but sure, something we could look at. Thanks. Um, and then the question is, are the results downloaded uh, to your PC or do they remain in the cloud? Both, actually. So um, by Rhino being a desktop application running locally on your machine, yes, for visualization, we're actually downloading the results locally to your machine. So you'll see in your documents folder, you'll see new add a CFD folder and in there, each of the cases, each of the uh, run with the results you downloaded. They will also still be on the cloud um, on the SimScale side, let's say. So they will remain active so you can safely delete your folder uh, after downloading and after visualizing. Let's say you've, you've finished with taking your screenshots, your report is out of the door, you can delete that folder. Um, the project will still live in, in SimScale and will still be accessible through the app for a new download, let's say. And you'll see that actually the transient simulations, the results of that, they're actually really big, like they could easily go into the gigabytes. And uh, the average resolutions, uh, the average, average, yeah, sorry, average solution files are much smaller. So they're, they're maybe a few hundred megabytes. So they're, they're, they'll download quick and easy. Um, One one question more. Uh, we have a couple minutes. Um, is it possible to rescale the wind speeds? Uh, for example, uh, the simulation is run at 10 meter per second at 10 meter height. Uh, can we rescale it to maybe five meter per second at uh, 10 meter height? And maybe a related question: Is it possible to change the color uh, the color ranges of the wind speed? For example, instead of zero to to 10 meter per second, it go, going to zero to 25 in Rhino. Yeah, um, as of yet, no, not yet. Uh, but that's one of the things uh, we really want to push in now in the in the, in the next version. Like we really focus on the functionality now first, and and get it relatively robust to um, to get it running. But yes, that's definitely something we uh, will look at and is on the high on the list to put in the next version. Uh, both, right? So because. So pedestrian wind comfort, um, you don't have to set your uh, velocity coming in. Uh, so that's taken care of with the module on SimScale. So that goes with a typical 10 meter per second at 10 meter height. Uh, it runs the simulation for 16 directions and then connects to the climate file to calculate uh, the annual or the seasonal comfort values. So you don't have to worry about wind speed. If you're looking at structural loading, you might actually want to, I don't know if you want to, but uh, 
you're looking at different design wind speeds, right? It could be for a Euro code 30 meter per second for uh, an American code, let's say in New York, it could easily be 80 miles an hour, something like that. Uh, much higher than a 10 meter per second. I would say typically you would still run it at 10 meter per second, but you would then in post-processing uh, scale it up. So that's one thing uh, we will implement very, very soon and, and just push up an update. The nice thing is the update will be available on package manager and you can just install an update. So that it's a super smooth process. The other thing, exactly a very good point, uh, will be actually changing uh, the bounds of those color ranges, but also have a few custom color uh, gradients in there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Unfortunately, Maybe. not. That's yeah. To, to add to this, uh, in the meantime, you can still pause process your results that you have generated with the app on SimScale. Right. So what I said earlier that you're not able to run simulations on SimScale with the license from the app, that's still true, but you can pause process the simulation results online, right? So you don't need necessarily to download all the results to Rhino to, to view it there. Uh, if it's really a, a super heavy um, simulation uh, result, transient data, with four, five, six gigabytes, you can also um, post-process that online. And there you have a, a bit more uh, flexibility on the, yeah, setting the, the color legend, the bounds, uh, and scaling, for example, the wind speeds to a different value using the calculator. Um, then there's a question if there's a preview mode. So the simulation doesn't take a full 45 minutes, but maybe already you see some results in two to three minutes. Um, not yet. So we're working on a fast way to deliver simulation result previews. Um, it's, not, um, it's not yet available, nor on the app, nor in SimScale, um, but we're, we're working on that. Um, Hopefully we'll we'll have some news on this soon, uh, but for now you you have to to wait the full I don't know uh, 45 minutes right you you always can start with a very coarse simulation maybe lose uh, use less wind directions at the beginning uh, to get results uh, cheap and fast and then once you're comfortable you can then uh, increase the resolution to the required level. Okay, more, more questions coming in. So we'll just use the time we have uh, to answer all your questions. Um, five minutes more should be fine. Um, uh, I lost it, one second. So will the simulation start if the estimated GPR is above the available credit? Um, it won't. Right, so it, if it can take more than you have available, you'll get an error message that it will uh, the, it will surpass your available quota, and then you would need to reach out to um, to our team to add uh, your quota, um, or depending on how you will run your plan, if it's a pay as you go model, you can have a um, an increase of your credit that you can use uh, for the pay as you go model, right? That will be deducted at the end of the, the three month period, but have some initial buffer um, of, of GPRs you can use within that time frame. And if that is not enough, you can increase it. That typically takes a couple minutes uh, to do that on our end. There's a question about how big the meshes are for these simulations. How, how many cells? Well, it really varies by numbers here, numbers here. Yeah. right? Um, so in, in the app, um, you can choose the resolution. So low, uh, medium, high, and, and very high. Um, it varies because of the algorithm that is happening on the SimScale side on the cloud. It also varies very much on how much geometry ha do you have in there? How big is the wind tunnel? Um, so it's a hard one to, to say. 
Um, I'm going at here at the top of my head, but I I think the ones with those three exact ads uh, probably are in the range of like the city of London model. I would guess 10 to 20 million, something like that. Maybe a little bit less. I can't. I I, I mean I don't have the example at the moment on on the screen, right? But uh, the tower is a bit less. That's probably in the two million range or something like that. Um, but because of the refinement levels that are applied automatically in the pace phase solver, uh, that actually still means it goes down to sort of small cells around the actual building of interest. You, so the third example that we saw in the in the examples earlier, I think was also pretty fast, 19 minutes, and I think it also had a very low number of cells, maybe two million. Generally, rough estimate is if you if you increase the refinement by one level, your cell count will roughly double, right? Roughly double, maybe a bit more than double. So, right, you start for course with uh, with maybe three million, and then you go to six, twelve, twenty-four million for a higher resolution. Um, yeah, so that that's about it. If if you have the highest resolution, a dense urban area with high buildings. It can go up to uh, to yeah, 60, 70 million. There's one thing to mention. Per default, we have kind of a, a safety net, right? So we'll block simulations that run more than 60 million cells with the app. So if your simulation, um, so it's it's uh, after the actual uh, verification phase, would need more than 60 million cells, right? That could probably uh, result in a very large uh, number of GPRs you would uh, need. I mean, probably uh, 10, 20 in this, in this range. It stopped. Um, if, you, if you're sure you want to run the simulation because it's actually required um, for your study, you can reach out to us and we'll remove uh, this uh, safety net. Let's, let's call it for you. But right? it's not uh, for, for upsell reasons or anything. But just to have some basic safety net for you to not run extremely large simulation and, and suddenly, yeah, deplete all of your uh, GPU hours at once. So the safety net uh, will be in place. Uh, what's the sign-up website again? Um, here it is. We'll send it. So all the, after the webinar is done, we'll send uh, probably tomorrow a follow-up email where you can get a link to the recording of the webinar where you have everything again you can share it with your colleagues we'll also add there uh, the link to the sign up page so you find it easily and can sign up and what we also want to do is have in in a week from now and the exact date uh, will also be in the email we'll have some kind of a work live workshop uh, session so you can sign up for that and this is for basically helping you um, if you find any issues getting started with the app, if you already have feedback, right? So a more discussion uh, setting where you can sign up and yeah, we'll try to to solve your problems you have with installation or getting your projects running and, and give you some space uh, to directly talk to us. Okay, so I guess the time is up. We have hopefully responded to most of the questions. Um, yeah, if you still have more, feel free to reach out to us um, and sign up for, for the workshop session in a week from now. Um, the exact date we'll send to all the participants uh, via email. And yeah, try the app, uh, use it, see how it works for you. And we hope it's, uh, it's useful. It brings a new, a new way for you to, to run uh, early design studies. Uh, with complex models without the need to worry about um, needing a lot of time maybe to clean up your model before you can actually run simulation. So that is the main use case uh, I think here that we can uh, remove all the other worries for you that if you would uh, bring up such a CFD endeavor that you mind uh, that you mind uh, go, uh, going down a rabbit hole right where you need to clean up your geometry you don't know how how far you have to clean it up uh, to get the mesh going um, and still preserve uh, the necessary features that influence the flow. So this problem is basically solved with the with the robust solver. 
it works basically on any geometry and you just decide how fine you want to resol uh, resolve the, the flow field by setting the fineness right it doesn't impact really the the ability to discretize your geometry and mesh it good um final quick question on vegeta vegetation um trees vegetation how would you model that in rhino yeah so i didn't show that in the uh, in the example indeed um so you you would basically model uh, your volumes of the crown uh, as a, as a volume in rhino um, so wherever you have them all collect them on one layer and then in that first layer panel you can then choose there's a there's a group of vegetation you can choose the layer you want to add uh, you want to set as vegetation and within then each layer you can define uh, if you're familiar with SimScale there is a few uh, you you would have seen there's a few uh, preset types of trees like a plain tree an oak uh, birch and a few others or you could set a custom tree with an average height a leaf area density uh, and I think it's a drag coefficient and you can very detailedly tune um, the, the porous properties of that volume so that volume is then within SimScale on the platform it doesn't get any geometry assigned, but it's a porous volume of the mesh. So your wind will go through, but the energy will be absorbed according to the properties of that either typical tree or custom tree. Um, and you'll then see in the results, you'll probably see a slowdown of wind um, at comfort level, at height, at, at um, head height, let's say. Awesome. Great. Final question. Okay, thanks again uh, to all the participants. Uh, we'll follow up with an email. And thanks, Jerome, uh, for being here today. No, thank um, you. Pleasure. And for yeah, developing the app um, and to bring that it that far that yeah, we have now the first uh, actual third-party integration that we can share with with everyone. Yes, exciting times ahead. I think. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.